Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Linda McElduff and I am the course director for the Masters in Planning and City Resilience. So this afternoon I'm going to tell you about this innovative and important program of study and hopefully address any questions that you might have about it. But first I want to give some information, some background information to postgraduate study at Ulster University itself. So Ulster University have a range of excellent conversion courses for those wanting to change career and, and both our conversion courses and other courses help to give you a competitive edge in employment. And I'll talk a little later about the specific employment opportunities and support provided for students on the Planning and City Resilience Master's program. Now there's obviously a great sense of personal fulfillment um, that you can get from studying postgraduate level as you get to explore a topic of interest in much more detail and if it is a topic that you love and that you have a particular interest in then that level of personal satisfaction and sense of achievement is really so much greater. Now you obviously get taught by experts. The staff at Ulster University are experts in their field and as you will come to see during this presentation, the Planning and City Resilience Programme is delivered and supported by a truly multidisciplinary team of experts, all of whom are very active in their respective fields. For you, this means that you have the opportunity to learn from, be exposed to and perhaps even contribute to cutting edge research. We also offer a very supported study environment at Ulster University. We have excellent services available in areas of student support, careers development and library resources and there are further support mechanisms at the course level as well in terms of a dedicated studies advice mentor for example. Now obviously there are academic and, and professional qualifications that people get when they study with us um, and we also have really really strong links with industry and employers so that you just don't come away with the necessary knowledge and skills to be able to excel in your chosen area of study but you also get those industry links which really really benefit your career. And speaking of benefits uh, to your career, the quantifiable benefits uh, noted on this slide really speak for themselves. A postgraduate will earn on average an extra £8,000, which obviously adds up over a lifetime. Um, on fa in fact, it, it adds up to an average of £266,000, which is an awful lot of money. Um, and they also tend to progress, so they move up the ladder quicker, 20% quicker um, in professional settings. And also over 90% of postgraduate leavers are employed in professional occupations. Ulster University has a wide range of postgraduate study options available and offers a lot of flexibility. Um, so for example, there are different modes of study. We've got full time, we've got part time, and we've also got distance learning courses. And all of those options are actually available to you on the, the Planning and City Resilience Programme. And the university also offers flexible study levels as well. In terms of industry recognition, the university works with and has very well established links with a broad range of industry networks, including professional accreditations where possible, which obviously help again with your career progression. So in terms of application, um, this slide provides some detail on the application process at Ulster. So you do apply directly online and there is no official closing date for most courses. However, course places are limited. So obviously the earlier you apply, the better chance you have to secure your place. So you can apply for multiple courses, although you have to complete a separate application for each course that you apply to. And please, please make sure that you fully, fully complete the application before you submit it. If you're in any doubt whatsoever, it's best to get in touch and we'll be happy to help you out with that. In terms of fees and finance, again, a little bit of information here in relation to the academic year 2021-22. Um, there are flexible payment options available and there is a 10% alumni discount available as well. So there are finance options there for you to invest in your studies and in your future career. In regards to COVID-19, uh, we are currently making preparations to welcome new students for the academic year 2021-22. We will continue to do so safely and in line with government guidance and you can keep up to date as the situation changes by visiting the little website noted on the slide in front of you um, and that does get updated regularly so it is really the best point of contact in regards to anything to do with that. 
So that's the wider context of the university within which the Masters in Planning and City Resili Resilience sits. Um, so before moving on to course specifics, I wanted to talk a little bit about the wider context that really sets the scene and the rationale for the programme and highlights, I suppose, the importance of developing skills and expertise around the topics of city resilience and planning. So the first point I want to raise is around urbanisation. So by 2050, it's estimated that 70% of the world's population will live in cities. Now, this urban transition presents social and economic opportunities, of course, but on the other hand, unplanned and poorly managed urbanisation can result in or at least accentuate inequalities, pollution, unsustainable urban sprawl that actually reinforces inefficient urban development, increased private vehicle use and unaffordable infrastructure. In parallel with urbanisation, we still have the climate crisis. It's not going anywhere. We have demographic change as well. We've got technological advances that really amplify the pressures upon cities to keep citizens safe to keep them healthy, keep them prosperous, well-informed and supplied with essential services. It's really argued that the battle for our planet will be won or lost in cities. And under such circumstances, city managers, city planners are increasingly required to plan for risk and uncertainty, or in other words, they have to enhance city resilience. More recently, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a real test for and off our cities and their capabilities to address the spread of the infection and has really challenged our presumptions about sustainable urban development and design. You know, are our urban environments conducive to social distancing? Can they uh, permit uh, the restrictions regarding outdoor dining, for example? You know, we are paying much more attention now to our surroundings and engaging with our local environments than ever before. And really, in terms of city resilience, it has brought into sharp focus the inequalities in the quality of and the access to city infrastructure, including green spaces. So here, wherever you are, right now, we are being challenged to rethink how our cities are being planned, how they're being built, how they're being managed, both now and into the future. And make no mistake, there will be major changes and challenges ahead. Now, these challenges, may never be fully resolved completely, but they cannot be ignored or denied either. And we can mitigate some of their impacts and strengthen the ability of societies to prepare for and respond to the impacts that we cannot avoid. And on the Planning and City Resilience Masters, we explore the role of planning specifically in doing this in an equitable and effective manner. Now, responding to urban challenges and planning for city resilience is an international agenda. At the global level, the United Nations is coordinating efforts to address urban challenges via international agreements, not least the, the sustainable development goals that you see before you. In particular, Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, is specifically dedicated to urban systems and seeks to make cities and human settlements more inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. And in that, it identifies a particular role and a particular important role for national and regional planning. So below that, at the national and local levels, governments, non-government bodies, businesses, civil society, us, we are being tasked with translating and implementing such global ambitions into local actions and practices and to make our cities and places more resource, resource efficient, competitive, healthy, inclusive and resilient. An increase in number of cities are already pioneering local and holistic responses and interventions. So there are good practice examples and lessons out there that need to be captured and learned from. And we critically explore such examples throughout various modules on the master's program. And we investigate their actual contribution to resil resilience building programs on the ground. Resilience, of course, is an elusive term and it has been used and twisted to mean different things and many different things in different contexts and, and disciplines. Increasingly, uh, interestingly, um, in current conversations around a return to normal, city resilience is actually not so much about bouncing back or returning to normal, but rather it places emphasis on the adaptability of places, their ability to transform, their ability to grow and their ability to learn from previous experiences. The figure on the right is the City Resilience Index, which was developed by Arab, and it outlines four critical dimensions of resilience. 
incorporating a range of indicators and considerations relating to health and well-being, economy and society, infrastructure and environment, and leadership and strategy, which really reminds us that building city resilience is a cost cross-cutting issue, cross-cutting endeavour, and will require multidisciplinary approach. But one important discipline in that mix is planning. So planning, um, the effective responses to the issues really facing cities and for building resilience will require greater attention and understanding of how the land resource itself can be best organised and used, how and where people live, how and where people work, how people and goods move within, beyond and between cities and other geographies, and how energy is generated, used, distributed, and so on and so forth. Planning guides the future development and use of land in cities, towns, and rural areas, and helps to ensure that where development and changes in land do occur, that it happens in suitable locations and that it is sustainable. And it also provides protection from inappropriate development. So we can think of it as how we as a society seek to strike a balance between, uh, between allowing development of land and of buildings to support economic development and provide the things that we need, like homes, jobs, roads, so on, and improving and conserving our public spaces, heritage, amenities, and the environment, and also to help tackle change, climate change as well. So it's really this backdrop which informs the teaching and learning on the Masters in Planning and City Resilience, which really focuses on the role of planning in terms of strengthening the ability of society to adapt to and mitigate for the anticipated impacts of contemporary social, economic and environmental challenges. And in doing so, the programme embraces a range of topics that relate to the conceptual and practical issues involved in building city resilient cities. I'm going to show you some of those um, topics in a moment. But first to turn to the mode of delivery. So the programme is available in both part time and full time mode and in either a blended learning approach, in other words, a traditional face to face teaching that's blended with a virtual learning environment or as a distance learning program, which will be a fully online virtual learning experience. In the full-time mode, the, the program would take one calendar year to complete, and we'll see the breakdown of the semesters in a moment. And in the part-time mode, it would take three academic years to complete. In terms of hours, 10 credit point modules equate to 100 hours of study and the majority of modules on the program are 20 credit point modules which means 200 hours of, of effort of study and these hours are really made up of scheduled classes but also independent study a large proportion of independent study now class contact times vary uh, by module but typically you could expect to be you could expect three contact hours per week per module and this contact can take the form of lectures seminars workshops site visits and the precise timetable for each semester is not confirmed until closer to the start date. Um, where appropriate we like to give students the lecture materials in advance of class to allow for more active and collaborative sessions during the weekly timetable or face-to-face -face sessions. Planning and city resilience embraces a really wide range of topics and we have worked really closely with our external advisory group who are really a panel of industry experts from both planning and resilience across public and private sectors to design and develop the modules on the program to ensure the fit with societal and industry demand and need uh, but also to ensure that they align with the teaching and research expertise of the staff at Ulster University as well. So on the next slide, you'll see the results of those discussions in terms of the modules on the program. But I first wanted to highlight four cross-cutting themes that cut across all the modules on the program to varying extents. And they are sustainable development, social and climate justice, inclusive planning and partnerships, and smart interventions. So this is the course structure in the full time mode. So you will see that there are three um, modules in semester in semester one highlighted in green, three modules in semester two, and one long module in semester three. 
So in semester one, you would take spatial planning and practice. And this is the module that really provides the platform to understanding the role and interrelationships between different stakeholders in structuring and shaping land use policy, and also explores how planning sits within a particular legal framework. Sustainable Development Strategy for a Secure Future is a lovely little module that really explores the historical and contemporary debates around sustainable development. So here you will gain an understanding of the issues and challenges involved in responding to the delivery of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In resilience theory and practice, this module provides you with the core knowledge and understanding of the the key theories and concepts of resilience and the role of planning in enhancing city resilience. In semester two, healthy communities, really, really important module right now in particular. Um, this module provides you with an understanding of how planning can play a crucial role in creating inclusive environments that enhance people's health and well-being and also help to diminish health inequalities. International city planning provides an opportunity to critically evaluate the practice of planning and development in a variety of international settings. So this module incorporates an international field study where you will experience firsthand planning and resilience based practices in a different context and be challenged to identify lessons for practice elsewhere. I want to come back and talk about this study again in a moment. For the third module in semester two, you have a choice. Um, so you're able to, to select a module from a variety, from a set um, list of options here, which provides flexibility for you, accommodates your educational preferences, and also perhaps your career progression goals as well. So here we have inclusive engagement as an option, which is really about civic agency and participatory planning, and explores the opportunities and challenges and benefits of inclusive engagement. Leadership for Managing Change um, explores leadership styles and approaches to advocating and delivering change, change agendas, which is never easy. Environmental Protection and Sustainable Technologies um, covers the purpose, the processes, the principles, the skills in the practice of environmental protection and sustainable technologies. So it has topics like protecting life on lands and in water, taking action on climate change and promoting responsible consumption and production. And finally, public service delivery and outcomes explores the evolving governance models associated with the design and delivery of public services. Of course, an essential element of, of all postgraduate work is a significant independent empirical research. So in the final semester, you will complete a module in research methods and project. And here you will select a topic of your choice of a particular interest to you. So again, there's that flexibility and you will work closely with an allocated supervisor to develop your ideas, gather empirical data analyze your findings and so on. So this really presents you know, a real opportunity here to contribute to existing knowledge. So that's the, what the course structure looks like in full time. And this is what it looks like in the part time mode. So you can see that the suite of modules is the same, but the ordering of them is different. So for example, in year one of semester one, you would take spatial planning and practice and sustainable development strategy for a secure future. And in semester two, if year one, you would take international city planning. Then in year two, semester one would be resilience theory and practice. And semester two would be healthy communities. And then your choice for, of the options, the list of options. And then in the third year in the part-time mode would be the research methods and project module. In terms of assessment on these modules, modules are 100% coursework. So, and, and there's a maximum of two items of assessment in each module. Now, there are a range of, of assessment techniques, including academic essays, research projects, research reports, um, strategies, practice and policy submissions, as well as some oral presentations as well. And where possible and, and where appropriate, the coursework assignments are aligned to a client or live project, providing a real opportunity to contribute to resilience building policy and practice in real time. So for example, as part of the assessment for the Healthy Communities module this year, students were working with Belfast City Council to complete a site appraisal for a child or age-friendly strategy. 
In addition to the assessments, uh, you will, of course, be given timely and relevant uh, feedback on all of your work as well, which will allow you to identify areas of weakness and strengths and be able to bring that forward into future assessments as well. So why study at Ulster? Well, there are a number of reasons. And the first really for me is the course team itself. There is a truly excellent and supportive teaching team on this program. I am the course director, but I have a whole team beside me. It is truly a team effort and we are multidisciplinary as well. There are some planners like me, uh, but there are also those with expertise in urban design and architecture, energy, environmental health, real estate, sustainable development, and so on. And the course team are all members of their respective professional bodies and all are fellow, uh, fellows of the Higher Education Academy. We are also all research active and as a result, the teaching on the program is very much research led and inquiry based learning. There's an excellent staff to student ratio, ensuring that there is a high and continuous level of support throughout your studies with us. On the first day, day one, during induction, you will be introduced to your academic mentor who will provide studies advice and any additional developmental support that you might need to ensure that you develop your study skills and can reach your full potential academically throughout the program. You'll typically meet with that mentor one to two times a semester, but but more if you need it. We have a number of local and international field visits built into the program. Um, you may know that Belfast is one of the 100 resilient cities um, network, part of that network. Um, some of you may have even seen or contributed or commented on the city's draft resilience strategy. And this really presents an excellent opportunity to study in and learn from and perhaps contribute to Belfast's resilience journey. But also further afield, the international study visit that I mentioned previously that's attached to that international city planning module. It's reviewed each year in terms of location and activities, but for the last number of years we have visited the Netherlands pre-COVID of course. Um, and we hope that we can return to international visits again soon. But during such local and international visits, we will use these urban areas as a laboratory for learning, for exploring, and for testing our ideas for a more resilient future. At Ulster University, we also have a dedicated space for planning students, the Urban Planning Studio, where much of the face-to-face -face sessions will take place, but also this space provides an opportunity for you and your peers to come together to work on group work, for example, or advance your own individual pieces of assignment. There are computers available in this space which have all the necessary tech that you will need to complete your assignments. And it's also a space that students have used to, to really hang out and meet up with each other and, and really a social space for our student group. And really there does exist a really strong sense of identity and community within Ulster University's planning programs with the provision of that dedicated learning space, the Urban Planning Studio, but also there is an active student society as well. It's called the U Plan Society. New students on the, the city, the, the, the planning and city resilience program will be encouraged to join in the U Plan Society and partake in any co-curriculum activities. Last March, the pre-COVID restrictions, the society put on a hugely successful conference on the theme of resilience and had a really impressive range of speakers from academia, the Belfast Resilience Commissioner, the Department for Infrastructure and so on. Um, who, who knows? This could be you participating in or developing a future you plan event in the future. So in terms of stu student feedback, our current students on the program are doing exceptionally well and are all very complimentary about their experience thus far and all would recommend the program to others. Here you can see some aspects of the course that were noted in particular. Um, including the range of interesting topics that are covered on the program and the fact that each module provides not only local and national focus but also provides that global context as well which is really important in terms of becoming global citizens and future proofing your skills and knowledge. Students also like the incorporation of guest speakers into their learning from whom they can not only learn from, but develop networks with. And we have some really excellent uh, guest lecturers um, who are very well renowned and on top of their respective fields. 
in terms of the learning environment, teaching staff were noted as being knowledgeable and helpful and students feel able to ask questions and discuss topics during classes. Students also positively con commented on how such classes are designed and structured themselves in terms of manageable thematic chunks allowing for time outside of class to work independently and perhaps just as importantly for some downtime and free time as well. So the programme is fully accredited by the Royal Town Planning Institute, which really reflects the quality of the programme and the currency of the programme in contemporary planning practice and policy. We have worked really closely with the RTPI in the development of the programme, which has been hugely beneficial. This contact and input will be secured into the future with input from the RTPI practitioners in the form of guest lectures and advice sessions for those wishing to obtain chartership membership of the RTPI going forward. Now the RTPI do have a bursary scheme. The RTPI Future Planners Bursary Programme is open to graduates from any discipline who enrol on a fully accredited planning master's degree at an RTPI accredited planning school of which University is one, University of Ulster is one. So each successful uh, applicant will receive a sum of money after successful enrolment. Um, there are various terms and conditions, but if you get in touch with me, I can direct you further on that process. In terms of careers, so global initiatives such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals that we've discussed really illustrate the need, the growing need for practitioners and graduates with the skills necessary for progressing the resilience agenda. It's, it's anticipated that demand for professional planners with those school skills will continue to expand nationally and internationally due to rapid urbanisation, growing inequalities and also the climate crisis. The technical and transferable skills gained through the, the modules will help prepare you for securing and maintaining employment within this ever-changing context. The programme provides a clear development opportunity for both current planners in public or private sector with aspirations to work in the area of resilience and also those graduates from any undergraduate programme who wish to transfer to the field of planning. Graduates will have excellent career opportunities in planning and development agencies and consultancies, local authorities, regeneration, environmental management, community development, climate change mitigation and, and other planning related careers. Opportunities also exist within the Belfast School of Architecture and the built environment for graduates to embark on PhD or doctoral research study in a wide range of planning and resilience topics. So on this last slide, you can see my contact details and also links to social media platforms if you want to follow what we do and to join in the, the discussions. I look forward to welcoming all of you to the programme in September and working with you during the course of your studies. I'm happy to answer any questions now or if you want to email me separately, that's OK too. So finally, I want to wish you all the very best in your applications and the decisions uh, that you have ahead. Stay in touch.